no matter how poorly the lanes went, you're still going to win if you have a stronger team fight. So at least a decent amount of team fight, I would say. Because last game they had almost none, just Darks here with nothing to combo with. Yeah, well, we're going to find out because we are in the draft. Nice. Look at that. It is uh, going to be, again, Evil Geniuses on the Radiant side uh, with Secret on the Dire. They banned Shadow Demon first, so Team Secret did manage to get that in the previous game, but they won't be able to get their hands on it this time. And as mentioned, Underlord once again removed. But with the with the Shadow Demon banned out, it means that maybe Slaughter is going to make it through for the first time. Ember yeah, banned out instead of the Lunar. Slaughter is more manageable than Ember, I think. Yeah. At least uh, mid one's Ember. Mid one's Ember is just really, really good. And uh, Earth Spirit, also one of the heroes that gets banned a lot in the first couple. So we'll, I we'll think see. Luna is going to get banned. Yeah. First pick will go to Evil Geniuses, so they, uh, I think they would like to get their hands on that if they have the chance. I don't know, Luna without Shadow Demon though, I think you can just counter with Slaughter or Lifestealer, right? And then you're not in a good spot, so... We've seen a lot of Luna Rubik's though. Although yeah. May I... Maybe that's only when the Shadow Demon is on the other team so you can actually steal the disruption, but... Yeah, it is, mostly. I, I don't particularly like the Luna in this sort of opener when Shadow Demon has been banned out. Okay, Slaughter's been taken out. Luna still available to them. I don't think they're, they're gonna go Luna. It's either Earth Spirit or Wisp for them. You like to pick up the uh, the supports first, that's for sure. At the same time, do you really want to face a Luna rather than take it for yourself? It's it's a scary hero to face, Shadow Demon or no? It's a good hero if you play around it. Uh, there goes the Earth Spirit. I mean, it goes for Luna. You need to play around Luna. She's good at pushing, good at lane. You can try lane offensively. Uh, fight. She deals a lot of magic damage in team fights. Just put towers, but you need to protect her. Just Luna by herself is not so strong. Scales really good. I mean, great into late game. And the Earth Spirit pick from Evil Geniuses doesn't reveal anything at all, actually, because you can Silencer. can mess up a lot of different lanes. Okay, we're back with the Silencer for Team Secret. It was a greedy Silencer, as we've seen it before, with the Face Boots and the Helm of the Dominator, but they did win the series against Digital Chaos with that Silencer support. As for... Um... <clears throat> Face boots on silencer, it's good until I don't know 15 20 minute mark. After that, it's better, better to have power threads, you deal so much more damage once you get that int up. Don't you agree? Yeah, I agree. Um, some even tranquil sometimes I prefer more. Yeah, it depends on how, how the game's going. Well, well, wow. by Steam Secret, don't want to deny that. <laughs> So picking up your first two supports first, this is, a, this is a bit funny because earlier on today, I believe the first game that Team Secret played, they were the team to pick up their three cores in the first three. And now they pick up two of their supports. And I say supports because we've seen Silencer in the four position. There is a small chance that he won't be, but I don't think that Secret would, uh, would stray from the path they've gone so far. What could make you pick your first two as two supports? It's because they're, these two hot heroes are hotly contested. Silencer doesn't survive the second ban phase, and Io, as we've seen, has been first phased by EG many mm -hmm. times. So it's simply because they want to take it away from EG. The cores actually haven't been that contested. They don't share that large of an overlap in their hero uh, pulls that they picked for their cores. Luna completely ignored, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh... I love the Dark Seer pick because uh, Silencer and Dio really doesn't contest him on the lane, don't have any slow, stun, disable. Couldn't EG just pick Spirit Breaker and just run at him? Oh, they're gonna have Earth Spirit with Dark Seer top, it's a really deadly combo. It's just pretty nasty. Shield roll in on Silencer and Dio if they get caught out of the position, they don't have any escape mechanism. They can get some easy kills and punish it. All right, we got some cores uh, removed now, at least, uh, with the Lifestealer and the Templar Assassin. And uh, again, Luna still in the pool for now, but uh, Juggernaut's already removed, and if you're going to remove more cores, then why not remove Luna? Unless think... they're so, so dead set on being able to beat Luna with the draft. I think they can actually just run at the Luna, because one of them is going to pick it if it's not banned. 
It's a shadow fiend last, so... Not banned. And Secret's up first. Now, having a loan on that lane, try lane with Tayo and uh, Silencer seems weak. Yeah, and in the support combination so far, they're lacking a lot of control of the Sable. You would expect them to try and fix that with the cores they still need to pick up. Legion Commander definitely has uh, some lockdown in there. Looks to be Kazu's hero for this one. You like the hero on the offlane, the cost? Yeah, it's fine so far. They have a good combo. But, uh, relocate once uh, Legion gets level 6 and Io gets 1 as well. And they can uh, use Global Silence later on in, this, in the team fights. I guess that's how they're gonna initiate the fights. Just blink in with uh, Legion Commander. Why else see though for some of the other ones? I don't know. There's like Centaur still available, there's Clockwork I think are both also like pretty good heroes. Why do you think they go for Elsie? Just better synergy with the Wiz? You can help them out more later or what? Um, we'll have to see. So so overall it's a, good, it's a good hero, especially if you get some early damage on him. If it's not contested on the lane. And his talent tree scales really good. Alright, so looking at Evil Geniuses, they are probably asking the same question as, uh, as we were. Why Legion Commander now? Is there something that Team Secret is, is trying to hide by going for Legion Commander this early in the draft? Well, they would have had all the freedom in the world to still pick it up last if they really wanted to. Maybe they think this is uh, really good for, that, for the aggressive dual lane. Io and the Legion Commander. I think mm -hmm. it's one of the better pressure lanes. I think uh, he's one of the best offlane partners. Yeah, so Spirit Breaker, they can just run at them. It's, I think it's very similar to last game where EG kind of run run at them with the Spirit Breaker, with Io Shell, with the Earth Spirit, and Secret can't really do anything about it. No, the Io is already very squishy. And previously we were questioning what type of hero, which hero Evil Geniuses was going to pick up that could deal with the Spirit Breaker, could maybe interrupt his charge. They don't really have anything so far. They don't have anything so far. Yeah. It's gonna be a safe lane and uh, mid hero. So, so they need control. So, yeah, they need control and maybe they don't Puck. Have... Maybe might be okay. I think he's like pretty good against the Earth Spirit roam. He's also pretty good against the Spirit Breaker roam. He has an instant stun. What do you guys think about a Dragon Knight? Dragon Knight's alright. I think they have a lot of. Uh... Magical damage though with mm. the Ion Shell and the Earth Spirit. I think it Dragonite really shines when you're versus like Slardar or like Life Stealer, someone who just relies purely on physical damage. Okay. Um, and it, it would be nice if they wanted a pusher. They still have two cores available to them. They do indeed, and they are taking their time thinking about what to get next. And it will be a core. Would you you'd normally want to pick up your your MP hero first so that you can save your mid laner? And there it is. It is the Luna coming back. They're At this point again. though, I feel like Evil Genius is, is very comfortable dealing with this, otherwise they would have removed her from oh. the pool. Oh, hello. Clinks. EG's old school counter to the IO. They like this a lot. Get level 6 on Clinks, run to the jungle, boom. I personally don't think Clinks is strong as he was before because of the camps. Like, it's really hard to find a neutral creep. Uh, I, do you think, like, Helmet Dom would possibly be a good item on him so you always have a creep to dominate? Or is Just it... run around with your own creep? Yeah. <laughs> Smoke up, eat it. Eat it? It's nice to have a creep on demand, though, for sure. It sounds stupid, but... It's really hard to find the big camps. Every two minutes, and if it's like one's blocked or one taken out by your team or the enemy team. You just team. go to the forest, dominate the creep, pull it back to lane, then when you want to go gank, you just eat your own creep. Or in the middle of a team fight. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. Lacoste is not sold. How about having your supports get a helm of the dominator and they feed you a creep? That would also work, but that would require team. Well, maybe it's a counter to silencer going that helm of the dominator. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's actually, that is a yeah. point. You can eat silencer's creep. Mind blown. Mind blown. Oh, yeah. We got there together, Lacoste. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're looking for a mid laner. We have Queen of Pain banned out against uh, some males. Queen of Pain play. <laughs> Uh, looking to see what Evil Genius is going to remove. 
Does the Queen of Pain band say anything about what EG might go for for Sumil, or is it just a generic mid band as they went for the TA band as well? Because Sumil plays both of those quite well. It's a hero that can assassinate the IO in the back line very mm -hmm. easily. You want to be able to protect their IO and getting rid of the heroes that can just jump on top of the IO constantly. Life Stealer, Slardar, Ember Spirit, Co op, all of them are good at just killing the IO instantly. What about Invoker for them as last pick? Ooh, I would like that. Some QW? Yeah, they have Spirit Breaker to go into IO since they can't stop it with anything. Blue and Beam. Blue and Beam, okay. <laughs> wow. Wow, nice. Wow. And uh, having a uh, shield on from Dark Seer or just Earth Spirit going in, making a lot of mess. Invoker just for the control and some magical damage output. It's great to have if know, there's a duel goal now. I don't know if Klinks is gonna be enough to go into late game. Oh ho! Ha ha! What are your thoughts on the sniper then? We haven't seen Sumail play too much sniper. No, no. Yeah. First time in this tournament. Do you like it? Yeah, I like sniper in general. Do you like it in this draft? I wanna see what Team Secret picks as their mid hero. Which heroes do well against Sniper? There's not that many left. I mean, you've got, you got Viper, Razor, perhaps? Magnus? Magnus. Magnus. There's no melee hero on uh, Team Secret, but still you can empower... I'm oh, sorry, there is a, a Legion, Legion commander. commander, but you can still empower Luna. It's all pretty nice. So Isn't the he going to struggle in lane? Say again? Isn't he going to struggle in lane? Mag versus Sniper? Sounds awful for Mag. Yeah, it is. And they don't have anyone to help him out, like you can't reach Sniper. With IO and Silencer, he's just gonna be on his own. Probably gonna be dual lanes, I think, for Team Secret. Just Legion Commander with uh, IO on bottom. Mm -hmm. On offlane. So am I right to say that you are preferring Evil Genius' draft in this one? Yes. Yes, we are. Quite heavily favored? Uh, not as much as game one, okay. but, but better than game two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't <laughs> difficult to do from what you guys have told me. Okay, we're going to find out how this game three is going to pan out. The winner will face OG tomorrow in the winner's bracket finals, while the loser will move forward to the lower bracket, which is not where you want to be because it is all a best of one. So over to our commentators, it is Cuttle Guy and Fog. Thank you so much, Sheever, here hanging with my boy Fogged as we get underway for our final game of Day 2 action here. It's Evil Geniuses versus Secret. Fog, we were talking about it, and uh, you really are right. You're looking at these two teams' draft, I really, you really have no idea what the hell they're going to pick. <laughs> yeah, very hard to really expect what either of these teams want to go for. You can understand the Spirit Breaker and the Clinks wanting to kind of just deal with the Wisps, always putting the pressure on him. And the mag pick was a really surprising one to me just because of the nature of the matchup. Versus a sniper, it's very difficult, not only in the laning phase, but later on, the shrapnel being laid out is very hard for him to really get a good position and to go for those blinks. And they should be able to get a decent amount of information as well with Clinks and the Spirit Breaker kind of just running around getting info. And they have multiple different, like, kind of frontliners to protect the sniper to not let anyone get on top of him. They have Darkseer, Earth Spirit, and Spirit Breaker to just kind of guard him in a way. So I would, yeah, I would definitely like EG's draft more than Secrets as well. Definitely a lot on the side of EG that can cause that kind of chaos that you're mentioning. Spirit Breaker getting the front lines and Earth Spirit, of course, kind of dropping down the magnetized silences and stuns. And the next thing you know, there's a little peeping sniper in the back lines just whittling away on your team. Before you know it, you're down three, four members and quickly outnumbered. So, I mean, that would be the Evil Genius's storyline on this one. But yeah, as mentioned, Secret kind of everyone feeling a bit iffy about about this Magnus pickup here, looking like the mid one grab here. But uh, I love Magnus, man. He's a huge crowd pleaser. Yeah, always is. I want a huge RP, man. I want the hype, but yeah. It's very hard go. for them to stop his eye in the early game, too. Like, if he goes for a charge, they don't really have anything to just really stop him in any way. And we do see Pi actually starting off straight up in the jungle as this Wisp. Jungle Wisp, right away. Wants to get his bottle online before he joins the Legion Commander in bottom. LC shouldn't really be able to get zoned at all in bottom. He's going to be able to just stand toe-to-toe -to -toe versus the Clinks because our Spirit Breaker doesn't really zone a Legion before Man's Shield at all. You don't have any range support. Curious to see where Crit wants to take his business here. 
Uh, typically, Air Spirit might float around the mid lane a bit to make, maybe make an impact there. Uh, but I don't know how much kill potential there is with the Sniper and with Midwan being able to skewer back if necessary. Could end up putting yourself into more of a risky position than more of an aggressive one. So he'll for now just kind of hide on the sidelines, leave some XP, and just kind of remain in the dark. And as a question mark to Secret as far as where his approach is going to be coming from. So I was going to say initially, I think he won't leech experience actually. Get let, let Universe get like that level 3, you know, let him get a couple more levels in the Ion Shell, and then he can make those kind of like aggressive moves. That's true, that's true. Just to get enabled more by it just makes it a lot easier for him to make moves. Zai, aware that, you know, Pi's not showing anywhere on the map, so... He goes and contests Pi's attempt at jungling, and yeah, Pi is completely thwarted by this. Unable to clear the mud golems with his, with the spirits, and yeah, his jungling is completely stopped. It's still level, still level one with zero experience on this west top lane. Some Kings. experience, some uh, pressure as well as mid lane. Zai just going for a casual charge. See the first rolling boulder usage after Universe does get that level two, so he has surge online in case of a. You know, just a little bit of mess up, and so yeah, he can bail out his buddy. And crit will be able to snag up the Another local charge bounty mid. rune here, but yeah, mentioned bit lane, and that's what I'm talking about. These Earth Spirit's eye could charge in on mid one, but they are potentially at risk of putting themselves into an awkward position if a skewer does come out. This one not too close to the tower, mid one will be able to fend it off, but continues to allow room for a Sniper to do his thing. Very annoying thing, as you can see. As he continues to peep at mid one. Gonna yeah. be forced back and just have to wait for that bottle to come up. Yeah, with boots, he can put a lot of pressure on mid one. Another charge coming out with a crit roaming in toward the mid lane too. This could uh -oh. be the potential he kill here. Totally pincered in on this one. Another shrapnel is gonna be out. A rolling boulder. Pi tries to come into assist, puts himself into trouble, and he will actually be the first blood. Martyr pile I die. Taking the attention away from mid one and handing himself over nearby Kezu. Jungling through those rock golem creeps. Zai thought about getting involved, but obviously doesn't want to be fighting up into the shrine. And now with some assistance nearby, not worthy. Bowling boulder back at the mid lane once again, but Fred not looking to follow it up with the boulder smash. And uh, just frantically looks to go for the TP. Skewer's pulling back into the tower, and they're going to be able to get it. Play there for mid one and for Pi by giving him some mana from the bottle. Letting him be able to get that skewer off, but uncontested free farm for RTZ and mostly uncontested for MP. He's had to use a couple of lucent beams just to cause the get the aggression from Universe off of the creeps. But yeah, MP's getting some pressure on him while she's just completely uncontested. Kazu now clearing some stacks with Pi. Power of the Wisp LC. Yeah, just looking to really burst up some early farm right now. And so with the help of the bottle, they will be able to kind of work through these camps and then be able to have enough HP to kind of take themselves back to the lane if necessary here. So now we have level 3 for Pi, level 4 Kezu. And he'll head back to the bottom lane to make use out of it and face up against RTZ once more. Top lane, here comes Zai. Looking to charge on in onto MP. Caught under the tower right now with the help of the Iron Shell. Begins to burn him up. MP turns around, looks to go for the Lucent Beam. And now a couple of TPs are going to be rolling out as Crit rolls in. Not going to get quite connection onto the Rolling Boulder. And now is stuck within the trees. Pi links up with MP and they look to turn and fight. Can they get to take down a Crit? Yes, they can. They will end up losing MP at the end of it. But Zai could be costing his own life for it. And that will be the takedown. Two for one trade, but EG thirsty to get the takedown of that Luna. They force a reaction from the mid laner even, so yeah, putting a lot of pressure already onto Secret with this Ion Shell. But the two heroes that can be enabled from Ion Shell from Universe. That's what we were expecting, man. Just Spirit Breaker, Earth Spirit early game is just, it's lots of chaos. And again, Sumail's gonna get this. I feel like I, I just see him versus nobody in the mid lane after like after the first few minutes in all of these matches that they've played versus Secret. So he's putting himself in a very good position. I mean, we already were expecting that the Magnus for Sniper matchup isn't one to really favor the Magnus a whole lot, but uh, yeah, it does leave Sumail to kind of his own devices then. So mid one will take his business elsewhere. He's playing in hand with some local creep farm, and will still be able to find at least some money coming his way. Same goes for Kezu, also continuing to jungle farm up. Under the vision of a ward, so they are at least aware. They know exactly where Kezu is, they know exactly when he's going to be rotating in as well. But, uh, they ping him out. 
He's an isolated enough, and then get some extra assistance. They might consider Sumail's making the range. move onto it. Charge on in. There's going to be the bump. Sumail's heading over, but there is a TP coming out onto his shrine. EG should be able to see this, and with Pi coming in, and with the help of the shrine, they will conclude their pursuit. And now comes Puppy rotating in. Hits them both up with the curse. I don't know. They're going to be moving into their own shrine. TP here. And Arteezy's come to play now. Gets off some good shots. That's going to be Pi going down. As do looking to rush in, but Sumail's hitting him with the headshots. Eventually we'll be able to get off the nuke and get the finish back in mid lane and charge back. Universe trying to keep away from Puppy, but not going to be good enough. Double kill for Arteezy on that one. And this game is even. 4-4. Four to four. Showing the power of the shrines. Both teams using, utilizing them very early on. TP coming in from Universe, coming from the top lane. Yeah. And even Arteezy getting involved nice and early with that first death pacted creep. Just three-shotting the Wisp, showing the power of why they used to pick it so much versus Wisp. Very low armor hero picking up now Blightstone on Clinks too. He's able to just easily take out a Wisp who has zero armor. I definitely got to be a little bit cautious of his positioning. I know he's been always good about throwing himself into the battle to make sure he's got an ally to help out. But as you mentioned, very susceptible to getting shot down between the clinks and, of course, uh, Sumail's sniper here. What's Puppy. kind of cool about the uh, clinks as well this game is that you know, we do see Luna's and majority of carries building the Dominator now, so the clinks is always going to be able to have a creep most of the times in those fights, as long as the Luna does bring them. I think that MP needs to be a little bit careful of where he has his creeps in those type of engagements, so Artur can't just always have Death Pack available to him. In the port, making the first aggressive move coming out here toward the safe lane. He's got Death Pack used. He looks like he's trying to make that aggressive play onto Luna. There's no defensive supports in position to help MP right now. They have Zai there, too. Looks like they know something is up, but... They see the pull. Puppy's nearby. Pops out the curse. Arteezy looks to move in and make it jump. There's going to be the rolling boulder in and the charge. Lots of hate on for the silencer. Eclipse comes out. Almost able to get the crit kill, but not going to be good enough. And it's also going to be MP going down. Arteezy takes another life and gets the double kill. 4-0 at the same moment. They are going to be able to get a response. I almost goes down with the back end of that assassination. We'll live on. Very close to him dying. And... Crit does die to yeah. the silencer damage in the top lane, but they do get the two kills on the clinks. Killing the Luna is massive, especially while Eclipse is used. Sumail, complete free farm in the mid lane. Taking a look already at the net worth. I know it's a little bit early to glance at that, but it is already about 2,500 accrued for EG after these nice crisp rotations coming out from Arteezy and from Zai and Crit. Now we're getting into territories. Level sixes are beginning to come online here. Yeah, have the RP good to go. Kezu's got his duel now ready. Time to bring in some of that bonus damage. Puppy sentry ward down, and Arkeezy is caught oh. by the vet. Is he oh going to be able to go ouch. for the kill? Anyway, just the vision from ouch. the charge. Will he be able to get one more hit? Ouch. He's out. Wow. Yeah, four shots, something like that. See you later. These fragile supports showing why pick up the clinks versus them. There's not a whole lot of lockdown coming out from the side of Secret on the supports at all. You know, it's the Wisp, the Sunsire, they are very squishy heroes that just can get easily picked off if they're not grouped up around their tanky cores by this clinks. Just not a fun game to be a support if you're on Secret right now, which is nope. crit, spirit breaker, and both clinks and snipers. No mercy right now. Yeah, really good play from Zai there, just keeping the vision while Arteezy's going for those type of plays. So he can go for those extra couple hits when they do think that they're going into the fog juke spots. He's able to always get those one or two extra hits off. So Mel going for the Dominator too, so he's gonna have a that's another Dominator creep for Arteezy if he does want to eat that one. It's also a very good build up on the sniper. More gives him another, you know, gives him his own frontliner. He doesn't yeah. need the Spirit Breaker and the Dark Seer with him. He's gonna have like a little creep with him too. Kind of Unless he has a you like know, wolf, he's like, just leave my wolf alone, please. Yeah. That's my wolf. Yeah, definitely. Yep, peeping on the first tower. Yep, shrapnel out. Obviously, not gonna be doing much work on the tower. Assassination here. Crit can make a move. Thinks about going for the Boulder Smash, but changes his mind. Pi was nearby. The bail him out. AG slowly making their assault onto this tier one. No response from Secret to kind of defend it at the moment. Mid one still hangs around that top lane. Pi's got to be careful here. Go for that blink. And yeah, as mentioned, Pi, here come the shots. There goes the little ball. Pi's going to be taken out just like that. And EG will be able to finish up that tier one tower. The money keeps coming in. Radiance, power is under. 
Level 6 already on Zyne now. Tome comes online too, so Crit will be able to buy that one up when he chooses to, to have his as well. And they have a very scary group up lineup when, with this mech coming online from Universe 2. Oh man, these tier 1s already two dropped yeah. already now. A little, uh, little levels here and some of the supports of Secret too. High getting closer, but still need that level 6 if he wants to relocate and Puppy. Trying to get level five. Mid lane, so, they're going for no another play here. The charge comes out onto MP. Arteezy's in position with the death pack to creep, and MP's gonna drop very quickly here. It's hit hard. The urn's still that's there, and that's it. It's over. And that's the that's the hard carry of Secret. Just getting dropped at a hat. There's no one who can really make a move on the side of Secret. Like who's who's the ganker? There is no ganker. The Wisp can't gank. The Silencer can't really gank. Mag is not gonna have a blink for quite a while here. Kezu is probably the one who's gonna be the ganker when he whenever he gets his blink, but it's still about 800 gold away. Yeah, but how many how many deaths? How many losses before we get to that point of these fancy blink daggers? And then what's it gonna feel like if? Say secret finally get all these items. They try to make that big play, and for whatever whatever reason, it just doesn't work out. That would be morally devastating. I feel like at that point, because their team really kind of has a serious like wombo combo to it, and a lot of big cooldowns that have to you know play around. And I don't really feel like the global is gonna do too much of an effect in this game either. Like, what's the big thing that he stops? It's the spirit breaker charge is gonna continue. Clinks yep. and sniper just kind of stand there and auto attacking away, and. The other ones, Iron Shell should already be used before the fight happens, and then Guarding Grief should be finished up for Darkseer relatively early in this game from the way that they're running it, so he's gonna be able to get his spells off quite freely. It's just, you stop the Earth Spirit, Earth Spirit and Earth Spirit initiation, that's kind of it. Earth Spirit, by the way, now level 6, gets hit, okay. Stun tries to reload, he's gone, he's gone, he rolling boulders the hell out of there, and that relocate is not gonna be happening. Good heads up from Crit, getting the kick reaction. Stun. Yeah. Already almost, ooh, feels like secret reaching at that point. My god, Pi eating a lot of damage from that mighty stack, and EG are in the neighborhood. They shouldn't fight at the Shrine, though. Yeah, they, they are strong at the Shrine, but this is still pretty awkward for both sides. Sai wants to go in, though. He's thinking about it, charges out, gets the buff onto MP, goes for the ulti, bumps him back a bit. RP onto two, but a vacuum wall responds from Universe. Jumping comes out, crits ready to play with a magnetize. Not gonna get the most connection, but damage has been done as Luna's gonna be going down. A follow beyond takedown, -like. a triple kill comes out for Arteezy already beyond godlike. Are it's you only 13 serious? minutes in. 13 minutes in, 13 kills? That was with the RP used, with the Eclipse as well. This is looking very troublesome for Secret. They waited for the Shrine to go down, they waited for a Secret to kind of back up away from it, and that's when Zai continued to go for the aggression. And you can see kind of the power. Universe not getting caught in the RP, he's able to get the mech off, and then he throws the wall, gets a couple illusions. The Eclipse, I think, gets tanked maybe one or two of the hits from it, but yeah, they're just kind of running over Secret right now at this point. They're not able to fight with the draft that they go for. To jump there on Kezu, but obviously he's going to make it back in a way now. He's creeping towards that blink dagger, but Zai on the prowl off a bit. Scouts up mid one. Looks like he wants to cause some aggression. He does have the charge up soon. Nobody else really in range to help him just yet. Sumail starting to make his way closer, but yeah, still it's a bit too far away to go for that aggressive move. Just e EG though, easily dictating everything in this game. Artiz is about to have a desolator. He's gonna like he's gonna two shot the supports. Like, maybe even yeah, just two shot the clink, uh, the wisp for sure. Maybe in some of the cores he'll get dropped down in like three or four swings. Cause Luna is absolutely crippled. He has the same net worth as Zai Spirit Breaker. Yeah. Level seven only on him as well. Fourteen minutes in, not something you see coming out from MP or any Luna's banner. Just a lot of pressure coming out from not only the Dark Seer Spirit combo, but the Clink's early rotations that came out. Lane. Looks like EG's trying to make something happen again as well. The Clink's Desolator is being delivered soon. He doesn't have it just yet, though. Do you want to fight me? Uh-oh. Arteezy pulls off. Yeah. Not going to make the commit. Probably the wiser choice. A little bit too deep. Just ha doesn't have his sniper in the area. Doesn't have Zai in the vicinity to give him that vision to go for those type of kills either. But yeah, this is also a really scary thing about playing versus a Clinks when you're a very in, at such a deficit as supports. You can't afford the D wards. You can't afford the sentries to be able to set up for those fights. So they're spending a lot of the money that they could use on other items on these sentries. And you look at how poor the supports are. Wisp has his bottle. He has his urn, thankfully. But Poppy is very crippled from all this. Um, yeah. Blink comes out for Mag. Blink yeah. comes out for Kezu. And this, this is, is their time to make this something is it. happen. I mean, if there is any sort of power peak for Secret, 
This is it, and if they want to be able to keep their heads afloat in this game, they got to make this count. They have got to make this count. Ooh, they just avoid the Radiant Scan. EG does scan near that ancient spot near the mid-river. Sai seems to know that something's up, though. Nobody's showing in any of the lanes, and he bails the hell out of there. Doesn't look like a Seeker are going to find the opening they were hoping for with this smoke, and they're just going to have to pick up their pieces and head elsewhere. DD clinks. Oh, good. Yummy. Yummy. That, that, oh. 280. Go to Roche. Yeah. Yeah, 280 damage without even eating the creep yet. He's gonna go in Roche. And he eats Sumail's creep, and now he just goes for the Roche he with uh, 500 Roche. damage, you know, just casual at 16 minutes in. Oh, another creep. Yeah, he's just soloing it. Very fused this time, and wow, that's pretty ridiculous how fast he does kill that. He's already level 14 on this point, so kind of to be expected with the DD. And being beyond godlike this early on in the game. But now, with this Aegis, it's going to be even harder for Secret to really find any opportunities. Wow. Well, Secret, though. Uh, we're hoping to look for openings with now getting the Blinks online, the Ultimates online. Now you have an Aegis you have to work into. Still, though, they got to they gotta find a way to fight. You can't just play the farming game against EG because it's a game that they're going to be winning. Yeah, you have, uh, you have your Legion Commander and your Luna who with the uh, Empower, but your versus a Sniper clinks at this type of advantage. And the, the Darkseer who's no jokey, the Guardian Rear's already finished up, so he already counters the Global Silence, which I think is probably the best against the Darkseer, but having such early Greaves completely ne counteracts that and neglects it. Oh, kind of awkward last game, like, seeing Arteezy so many times with just 10 damage. I mean, poor Kezu. I don't even think I've seen him be able to do a duel this game yet. Yeah, hasn't gotten the chance to. It's just, unfortunately, no opportunities before him, and obviously, EG is so bulked up. It's not seeming like there's going to be many opportunities moving forward, but... Charge it, coming out on Puppy. Claim yeah. the majority of this top lane, and they're looking for openings here. Puppy is going to be able to creep away, and they will not pursue. Uh, the objectives continue to fall here as EG will be able to claim that top tier 2. Taking tier 2, Secret finding to take their first tier 1 here, the bottom lane. Looks like they'll finally be able to get it, but EG are already moving on to the next objective here. and That's going to be a tier 2 mid. And I do not foresee Secret opposing it so much. In fact, they're just beginning to hide indoors here, at least if you're MP. Another tower goes down. EG's ridiculous economy lead grows even further. Was already 10k, which is ridiculous. Now getting towards the 15k mark. Rushing already. Base siege begins. Glyph is on cooldown, so this should be a free tier 3. All right, Secret. This is another opportunity for him. Maybe hoping that EG will get a, a little reckless. Staying a little too close to each other. Trying to make a siege happen here, but boys in blue pull off accordingly and can make their way towards the bottom lane if they'd like one more tier two goes down then shrines and then oh. sieging time they did smoke under award here so secret did see this one he is aware they are behind him with the rp with the blink but there is still an aegis on rt attempted to bait someone out doesn't look like it doesn't look like they'll get the chance eg pulled back and away rtz has a hurricane pike Oh man, he can even just walk up and with the charge, Hurricane Pike, someone and just four shot them from, or five shot them from max distance. It's the, eats the dominated creep again, so he is. You should just walk up there and shove gone. back Puppy. <laughs> yeah, Puppy, I think, has a shove him right now. now. He's got to go step. Oh, get silenced. Let's see with the nuke, but he's looking at going for the racks here, and oh man, he hits hard. Still has that Aegis, even though he takes a lot of damage, does a lot of work on the Puppy, but. He stays good. He's got that Ghost Scepter. Early value Ghost Scepter just to stay alive in cases like that. Yeah, I think this is the time where, yeah, EG backs up. They, we see the line draw from crit. Drawn from crit. Take out the bottom lane, push it out, go for the tier two. Clean up the shrine so you don't get wrapped around by any means and just crew the biggest advantage you possibly can before going high ground because it's still a bit scary to go into secret high ground you can always at, you're always at risk of getting skewered and then you get put in an awkward position where you don't really have a clear-cut initiator because crit doesn't have his blink dagger just yet to make those big moves it's just side to, uh, charging through so once this tier 2 bottom drops once the two shrines drop money that he does get from those will be enough for him to claim that, that blink and be able to that do that initiating and counter initiating force from the air spirit one more tier two to fall here. 
Now. Inside a secret. Universe with the blink as well, so more counter initiation and initiation. The wombo combo potential as well from the Earth Spirit Dark Seer is there. And here we go. They EG doesn't even want to go for the shrine just yet. They see that secret kind of pushed out of their base with that ward that they placed in the top jungle area. And this is their potential to go for another tier three tower. Yeah, Wall is down. Between Artezi and Sumail, these guys are just sieging. And they will take down the tier three without without even having to step inside. Shadow Blade on mid one. Inside. But yeah, Shadow Blade jump in. RP only catches onto one. A force to step up aside. And they're gonna get the jump on him instead with help from crit. Mid one goes down almost as fast as he jumps in for the play. Global comes out, but if it was to save mid one, it's unfortunately a bit too late. Now they look to open up onto the remaining racks here. Two racks is quick to go down. This game might be over, it's just over in yeah. a hurry. 20 minutes and Secret really have no answer at all. Easy with the instant four step on his teammate there it was Yeah, it was actually instant. So RP was expended with the Shadow Blade first shown and they claimed the Raxes anyway. Two full stats. This looks like it just might be over for Secret in this one. One of the more one-sided matches we have seen in this tournament so far. Two Raxes down, they pull off, they go back for the shrines. I mean it's, a, it's in desperation territory here for Secret. Uh, they're going to have to wait a full minute before even RP is going to be up. EG might not even allow him to get that breathing window. But really, just you—you you, you feel like for, you feel for some of these secret members because they feel like just their hands are tied. And again, Kezu not able to really find openings to be able to get any sort of dual work done. MP is just in total farm mode, even though you know he's ferociously trailing behind the cores of the other team. And even when he tries to move out on his own, just someone like Zai is there to kind of keep him in check. Yep. KB now finished up for Artizi, and this is where they're going to go for the last final sieges. Push out the lanes for the ending of this game. I believe Glyph should be back up very soon for Secret, and it is, so at least they have that going for them now. But top lane going to get pushed in, mid already naturally pushing in from the super creeps, and Artur is on his way. Here we go. Tier 3. Hi, everybody. I'm inside your house, and I'm taking your property. Shoots down this tier three just like that, suddenly to just about of a third of its life. Secret look to attend, and uh, pretty much only have one more good fight in them. Five seconds, they'll have the global back up, and they're gonna have to try their best to make it count if they want to stay alive in this one, and stay alive in the upper bracket. Yeah, Sumail constantly just grabbing a creep every time the Dominator's up just to have it for Arteezy to eat for that those sieges. Double Hurricane Punk coming out for the two. I don't know, they got the Ghost. That Frost attack is pretty damn good. And he eats it right away. Okay, well, <laughs> it's a nice scene, you Ghost. Jump in, here we go. Blade First now. duel of the game, and it looks like the damage could be awarded to Arteezy on this one. Mid one jumps in afterward, oh but it's a big vacuum wall combo comes out, and it just shoves Secret into GG territory, and it is over. Just like that, Evil Geniuses will advance Secret to the lower bracket. At least you got this tier 9 combo combo there at the end. He yeah. got the boulder smash on top of four-man vacuum combo. Um, yeah, EG's draft overall just very solid. The clinks pickup seemed to have just done everything for them. Arteezy's rotations were 